online learning has grown significantly over the past few months. And as the internet and education combine to provide people with the opportunity to gain new skills, adjusting to the new setting and the distractions that often come with it remain challenging for many. In this video, I will be discussing a few tips to help you set up a comfortable and productivity enhancing study space. Hi, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aziz, a second year medical student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And I love making video about productivity, time management, and minimalism. The first step we can take to optimize our environment for studying and working is to designate a space. How can we optimize our study environment if we don't have a space to study in? The first step in creating a positive study environment is to carve out a specific space for working. Ideally, this will be a place where we can keep and easily access our textbooks, computer, notepad, and other materials. Whether we are working at a desk in our bedroom or at the dining room table, deciding where we will work is a critical first step. The second tip is to block out distractions. Distractions are a major impediment to workflow. Dan Ariely, a Duke University behavioral economist, say, We think that we make decisions on our own, but the environment influences us to a great degree. Because of that, we need to think about changing our environment. A few easy ways to minimize distractions include closing windows to block out noise, silencing our phone, blocking time wasting websites, and working in a quiet environment. And if noise is unavoidable, Tranquil background music or noise cancelling headphone can be helpful. The third step we can take to optimize our environment for studying and working is to have proper lighting. The right lighting is everything. Whenever possible, natural light is the best source of light as exposure to sunlight is physically, mentally, and emotionally invigorating. And being near a window not only helps to get natural light, it also helps us get proper ventilation. And according to Harvard University, improved ventilation in a study space is associated with a 101% increase in test of cognitive function. However, natural light can be hard to come by, especially at night. So we can definitely make use of artificial light. But experts recommend incorporating layers of light to avoid eye strain if we have to use artificial light. In addition to making sure we have adequate light for reading, writing, and other tasks, different types of lighting impact productivity in different ways. For example, warmer lighting is ideal for creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in intimate setting. Colder lighting improves alertness, mood, and productivity. It even reduces fatigue by lowering melatonin levels. This is why whenever I have to study for a longer period of time, I set my lighting to a colder tone. The fourth step we can take to optimize our study and work environment is declutter. Clutter isn't just unattractive. It can actually prevent productivity and growth, while leading to feeling of decreased motivation and stagnation. It's also distracting, stressful, and creativity inhibiting, according to a significant body of evidence. So avoid falling victim to the detrimental impact of clutter by committing to keep a tidy space. The next step we can take is to go green, literally. You think plants are just pretty? Think again. The reality is that plants offer many benefits to indoor workspaces. After conducting an extensive literature review on the effect of plants on offices and office workers, researchers Caitlin Gailis and Brigitta concluded, plants can add more to an office than a decorative touch. They can oxygenate the air, bring some flora into the workspace and can improve employee satisfaction, as well as increasing productivity by up to 15%. Finally. The last step I believe we can take to optimize our study and working environment is to establish rules. 
One of the major challenges faced by many people who have found themselves unexpectedly studying or working from home is figuring out how to work alongside other family members in the same predicament. When we are all trying to work in the same space, this can quickly become more frustrating than fun. So set parameters for everything, from where everyone will work to when everyone will work. This may also mean spending some time understanding what works better for each member of the household. This also means establishing rules for yourself. One common complaint online studies and remote workers have is that work hours and personal hours often melt together, meaning we end up feeling like we are working all the time. So avoid ending up in this situation by establishing a schedule and sticking to it. In conclusion, no matter how much working from home may initially seem like a party, the reality is that it gets old after a while. You get tired, especially if you are unable to complete projects, meet deadlines and deliver on your academic requirements. One way to set yourself up for success is to create an optimal study and office space, starting with these six tips. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow.